Hi you guys and welcome to this vlog. This is something a little bit not traditional for me. I was invited to a social media influencer event here locally at the dry bar here in Louisville. Um, I did this cute little glitter inspired tribal gold situation on my eyes with a Kat Von D gold liquid liner. And I did that because this event is for the release of their glitter spray with Too Faced. So it is a collaboration with Too Faced and I'm excited because I'm under the impression that it's a mixture of gold and silver. And you guys know how much I love gold. So today's outfit is a crop top in yellow, inspired by dry bar, obviously. Crop top, halter top, and these jeans are from Madewell. I love them. I don't know if you'll be able to find them. I found them on clearance. They're kind of cropped for the summer. They do have a front seam that I just feel like is so flattering. Like, love them. Love the butt on them, other than my phone being in my back pocket, which is story of my life. My mustard shoes from Nine West. I've had these, honestly, since college. They've seen better days. We are falling apart, actually. They're not going to do wet styling. They're only gonna do dry stylings. My hair is curly post-workout, and that is just what they're going to have to deal with here. see it is right at sunset. Em and I went and got some salads from Whole Foods and now I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna close out this clip and I'm gonna promise you guys to do a little like maybe chat with you guys, maybe catch up with y'all on where my prep is at, maybe tomorrow. I'm not sure, but I will have some other fun content for you to follow this fun day I've had, fun evening. Thanks to Rabbi Louisville for hosting us at your shop and giving us these cute little dry styles. I had such a blast. I love going there. Everybody that works there is phenomenal. I 100% recommend treating yourself to a dry bar or a blowout at some point in your life because you are worth it. All right, good night. Oh God. <laughs> hey you guys and welcome to the next day. I figured I would use the rest of this vlog to give you guys just a little bit of a prep update if you will because I know you guys are all pretty interested in it and I've been kind of quiet about it on my YouTube channel and I'll tell you guys about that. I'm actually gonna stand because I don't have a standing desk and I kind of want one and I'm gonna stand because I've been sitting here pretty much all day today. I kind of have been a little bit quiet on my YouTube channel about my prep. I talked a little bit about being in a deficit but I probably didn't state yeah I'm in a prep for a competition. Anywho last year I did showcase my prep a good bit because I was super excited. I thought everything was gonna go really well and then things just kind of kept going south, kept going south and I had to document all that on my YouTube channel because that was my content and that was what was available to me as far as cheering with you guys and this time I've just kind of kept pretty quiet. I've also not been able to YouTube nearly as much. Morning! <laughs> he just woke up with his pops I guess. Um, 
So um, just with my client load and my obligations to myself during prep this time, I have made YouTube not a priority. I'm gonna just use this time with you guys to just kind of give you a recap of what's going on, be open and honest about how much of cardio and diet and all of that good stuff I am in. Like this is the first time I'm being completely honest and open and throwing it all out on the table for you guys. Um, as far as honesty, I've never really lied to you guys. I've just not like stated what's going on in terms of diet and cardio. And I'm not gonna give you hard examples because I never want people to think that this is how you lose weight or this is how you can maintain um, a lean stage body all year long because that is absolutely not the case. What I'm doing is strictly for an end game, an end game of being on stage. So that's another reason why I do keep pretty quiet about cardio and macros and <laughs> you're just gonna bring the cat too. Hi, meow. Oh God, the third one. He's down here too. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna give you this little guy though. I don't want him. Take him. I don't need him. Take him. Right, Take, him. Take him. Take him. Take him. Oh goodness, oh goodness. So what I'm about to say, and what I'm about to share with you, I don't want you to think that I did not do what I needed to do in my off season, because you guys know I 100% took care of what I needed to do in my off season to make my prep successful. I had to build up my calories. I had to keep those calories at a maintenance level for a long period of time, allow my body to be optimally functioning at that intake for a long period of time. So that creates a buffer essentially for your body and allows your body to withstand what it needs to get to during prep. Genetics do indicate typically how you're going to handle fat loss during a fat loss phase and like what's gonna have to go down or up in order to lose body fat to get to the level of conditioning needed for stage in a specific amount of time. For example, I got my calories up to pretty darn high in my off season, the highest I've ever been. I was to the point where in which I was kind of pushing food, I was eating till I was definitely beyond full. I was eating when I wasn't necessarily hungry because my satiety signals weren't really there because I just am not a high volume eater to begin with. But I knew that I had to eat a certain way in order to be able to do what my body needs to do in order to lose body fat in the future. We got my calories somewhere between a 2300 and 2500 mark in my off season. I stayed there pretty well. Um, my weight didn't really start increasing until we had got to that level and we had been there for about four to six weeks. Honestly, it stayed um, below 150 for quite a while. And then after that month, I went on vacation and then, you know, things just kind of started picking up from there. And so we tapered back food a little bit um, from that mark, not really that whole lot, but just to the point where I was like, okay, I can eat this. I can manageably eat this amount of food. So we didn't stay in this really high range for like I would say we were there for maybe, I don't know, five to six months. And then prior to uh, like a month before starting the diet, we did taper down just a little bit just to get me a little bit more comfortable in my food intake. And it's kind of like a prep before the prep, if you will. Weight pretty much kind of trended down for a good bit and then it kind of flatlined. So we started taking calories, we started adding in cardio, and pretty much I was losing relatively almost not even a pound a week. And that was pretty slow. And I had a conversation with my coach. We talked about timeline and we were like, look, like essentially this is where I've always had to get to in a prep, but previous prep that didn't work, the difference was is that my body wasn't stable enough to handle that low amount of food. So it created a high stress environment and it didn't release body fat. This time what's happening is we were getting our calories, my calories down, my cardio is up, but my body is exceptionally changing at a great rate and a good pace now. What I wanna let you guys know of, if you're interested in competing or if you are struggling because you're in a contest prep phase and you don't understand because your off season was so successful and you had such a high intake and you had such a great amount of carbs and you were doing hardly any cardio and now you're like, what the fuck? I've got to do this much cardio and this much, and I've got to take away this much food to get lean again. Well, unfortunately that might be the case. It's like no matter how much you get up to in your off season, there just might be that sweet spot for you as the athlete, genetically, where you start to drop body fat. The biggest thing, again, and why the off season is so important is it creates that buffer of safety for your body to have spent in a 
baseline in a homeostasis space and that makes it stronger to go through a dieting phase and that also makes the dieting phase less stressful. I can tell you right now that my head is clearer, I'm sleeping much better, um, I just overall don't feel super, super dieted, but yet I am pretty dieted at this point. With that said, this is getting a pretty long clip now. Um, I will be honest, I am doing cardio seven days a week. I have morning cardio because I choose to do it in the morning because that is what's best for my schedule. It gets my day going. It's not mandatory that I do it that way, but the, my coach does prefer it that way. Again, we're separating energy expenditure time frames. So that is best done with either training in the morning or cardio in the morning and then an option in the evening where you do some sort of physical activity as well typically the opposite of what you what you didn't do in the morning how i'm choosing to separate mine is cardio in the morning and then i was training one or two meals after my morning cardio however that over time I think it was just a little bit too much energy expenditure in the first half of my day and I was pretty bonked out by the end of my day and I think my actual internal stress was really high during that time frame because I was cardio, two meals, train, and then I was finishing off my day pretty much inactive, which is fine, but like I said, I feel like the energy expenditure in this first part of the day was so high that it created a high stress environment for my body. So what I'm doing now is cardio in the morning, I am keeping that space and energy for feeding time, for work time, for getting all my errands done, and I am training in the evenings now. I had to be more strategic with my schedule. I had to think about what I was, how I was gonna make this happen because I was so used to having my evenings and afternoons free, but now the middle of my day is more free and that's when I have to get most of the bulk of my work done or otherwise I'm now working later in the evening. I'm doing what has to be done for my body right now for my biomarkers and my feedback to stay optimal because guys right now doing the volume of cardio i'm doing and eating the little, little amount of food i'm eating i'm still staying relatively like sane in my head i'm still doing really well and like i feel so much better like comparatively to last year when i was doing this it's a totally different it's a totally different headspace don't wake up in the morning just tired and anxious and my anxieties my anxiety levels are low when it comes to the scale like I'm not super focused on it um, I know it has to come down more but like it doesn't break me down every morning when I step on the scale like it used to because whew, that last year was terrible I'm doing 40 minutes of cardio in the morning and then I have to do 30 minutes around my training window so what I do typically is I'll do like a good 10 minute warm-up I'm always an advocate of a cardio warm-up anyways so this was something that I was pretty much doing almost every single time I trained anyway and I only have to do 20 minutes after I'm done with my cardio this is all in a steady state state steady state 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 list lists if you will um we had been doing a good amount of hit prior to because hit was keeping my metabolic most metabolically active tissue active your glutes and your hamstrings and uh, then we started seeing a little bit of a stress marker come into play so we pulled out hip as of two weeks ago and weight has started steadily going down again and that's been a great response so we're sticking with hip or we're sticking with list for now i'm almost certain he's probably going to put hip back in because everything has felt really really good for the past like two to three weeks and we're going to probably need to ramp up intensity at some point without stripping away more food in terms of food that will carry me into this conversation is we've got moderate low high days i am essentially doing very low carbohydrates on one day then i spend the next day in a moderate state where i do carbs around my workout window and in the morning after my cardio so again where i'm most physically active is where my carbs are going into on those moderate days then my high days i have carbs throughout every meal we're doing two back-to-back -back high days at the end of a six-day cycle because that is what he has selected for me that is what he feels is going to keep me in the most hormonally balanced state i am still having my cycle i am seeing changes in my body that i've never seen before at this particular weight which my weight is a little bit higher so that's a good sign that i built the density in my off season that i needed to build that i was seeking to build and my lines and everything that's changing is just more vibrant now at this weight like i'm seeing so many different things that i didn't see before it's so exciting truly like getting it's getting to the point where like i can see this actually happening again i can actually see myself stepping on stage again and like 
that just like blows my mind the two day high days one of those high days i actually asked and requested of him to be a training day because i love to train on high carbohydrates i get a good pump um I, you guys know i love training and when my training can be that lit up like i'm that lit up for days like it just i can like i can get through the other stuff if i can train on high carbs then we love it and then he says okay all right meet me in the middle here and you gotta have one day of rest where you're not where you get those high carbs because those carbs are essentially what's going to keep you in that hormonally balanced state. They're also implementing me some restorative yoga classes. I told him I really wanted to incorporate that back in. So I'm still finding a way to incorporate my yoga to again keep me balanced in almost all aspects of this process. But without further ado, I'm going to send you guys off into this ab workout because I've never posted an ab workout on YouTube, like ever, I don't think. And with my Audacious Athlete Beta Crew, we are doing weekly abs and we are together picking out what we're gonna do. So this workout has been picked out by my Phase 3 Beta Crew and we picked it out last week in our Facebook Live. So I hope you guys enjoy this workout. See you guys in the gym. I met a gypsy and she hit me to some life gain To stimulate and activate the left and right brain Say baby boy, you only funk your ass your last cut You focus on the past, your ass will be your hands what? That's one to live by or either that's one to die to I try to just throw it at you, determine your own adventure, Andre Got to a station, hit my destination She got off the bus, the conversation lingered in my head for hours Took a shower, kinda sour, cause my favorite group ain't coming with it But I'm with you cause you're probably going through it anyway But anyhow, when and die, went on out and bought it Cause I thought it would be jamming, but examine all the flaws Get walls, get off lit, sad and it's costly But that's all shit, bro and I hope I never have to float in that boat up shit's creek. It's sweet. It's the last boat that I want to hear. I hope you guys love that ab workout. Please comment below if you want to see more workouts during this time frame or if you guys want to hear more prep chat. You guys let me know what you like the most. And I appreciate you guys watching this. As always, thank you guys so much. I love you guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button. Be sure to hit that bell so you never miss a video from me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.